Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church, changing lives, transforming nations. All right. Good morning, everyone. Okay. So weapons. Basically, we are kind of like in a military training these days. Okay. The last few weeks. Yeah. How many of you use the weapon that Pastor Mitch talked about last week? Praise, new song, yeah? Okay, so we are not just talking here for, you know, just information purposes. This is a training, and when you, once you receive the training, you, you know, put it into practice, okay? That's what it's all about. So, uh, yeah, so we are in a spiritual milita military training these few weeks, and um, that's because, you know, we, each of us, face countless battles on a daily basis. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, both hands. You can raise both hands if you want. And, uh, you know, from day one, when you enter the kingdom of God, like from the day you make Him your Lord and Savior, the day, from the very first day that you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, you have entered His kingdom and you are at war with the kingdom of darkness. You are at war with Satan and his demons. And none of us is exempt. Okay? No one is exempt from the battle. Whether you're the pastor or the preacher or the leader or the, I don't know, father, mother, teen, child. You're not exempt from this battle. Right? So that's why we need to make ourselves aware. And that's why we need training. That's why we need to hear what the word of God says about you know, how we need to arm ourselves, okay, and upgrade ourselves. So, you know, the enemy will try to attack every place possible, right, in our lives, our mind, our emotions, important relationships, not just any friendship, but those important relationships are specifically targeted, our finances, our success, our destiny, the call of God in our lives, all these things are tested, are tried, are warred against. And so, you know, some of us, you know, some of you, you might feel like, oh my gosh, yeah. You know, I, I've experienced like battles in all these areas. Okay. If you're saying that, yes, it's time for us to upgrade, upgrade our weapons spiritually. Okay. So, um, yeah, the first thing we need to know is we have weapons. Okay. We have spiritual weapons and we need spiritual weapons and the other thing is we need to upgrade it okay so today actually i was first when i started preparing i was preparing for you know prayer is a weapon and then while i was preparing i realized that prayer is more than a weapon okay so that's why yeah it says essential technology in battle okay so you'll you'll know why i i mentioned that okay, as we go along um, yeah, in 2 Corinthians, you can go to the next slide. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says, can we all read that together? 3, 2, 1. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So the Bible also talks about weapons. It talks about warfare and it talks about destroying. Okay, now who's going to be involved in all this action that's happening? Me. Say me. 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 Okay, the Bible also says that we are soldiers. Okay, and soldiers essentially have to, I mean, it's a requirement, it's a must, that they have to go through training, military training, in order to know how to combat the enemy. Same with us. We are in a battle, in a battle that we don't, see, you know, all the details that are happening. It's a much more complex battle than World War I or World War II because we don't see everything in the natural eye. But there are so many things happening in the spirit. Okay, so I have a picture in the next slide of a weapon room. Okay, so you might not be able to see all the details, but this is actually, it's, it's from a movie. Uh, it's from a Kingsman. So it's a very interesting weapon room. And I like it because there are... You know, there's a shoe with an inbuilt weapon. There's an umbrella with so many functions. Okay, it can uh, be used as a weapon in many different ways. There are specs that you can see and identify and detect the enemy in a different way. There's a pen 
that's a weapon, there's a light as a weapon, all kinds of things, okay? And then there's obviously all kinds of guns. Now, we have a spiritual weapon room, okay? So, Pastor Mitch, ha, you know, during the last few weeks has been exposing us, introducing us to the spiritual weapon room. So, what are some of these weapons we talked about the last three weeks? You can... Yeah, praise. Praise and worship. Speaking in tongues. Come on, you you got this. The word of God. And today we're talking about prayer. So if you see the different sections, there's one for praise and the new song. And then there's one for uh, praying in tongues, prayer, the word of God. So we are being made aware about our spiritual weapon room. Okay, are you excited? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great, I hope you are. So, um, you know, along the years, my idea of what prayer is has really changed quite a bit. Okay, so initially I thought, you know, the time that I spend in my devotion time uh, with the Lord, praying, reading the Bible, you know, giving all my prayer requests, talking to God about all my prayer requests, that's prayer. Okay, that was my idea and about prayer and, and it was just limited to that and sometimes yes when we get together at church with people and we pray together it, it's limited to only that but along the years after receiving upgrades teachings that have brought upgrades on prayer and uh, situations you know i've been through have automatically as a cause all kinds of uh, upgrade to happen in prayer okay so uh, last week actually um, yeah, a week before, uh, I had this bad sore throat and I lost my voice. Okay, it was uh, quite a frustrating experience because we had to do charades at home at certain points. And I'm texting him at home because I can't communicate, but I'm trying to communicate effectively, okay? But, um, so communication with God as I was kind of like, God, I want to pray out loud. I'm used to praying out loud mostly. But then, you know, the communication didn't stop. I was praying in my heart. I was telling a few people, I was, uh, I, I'm praying for you in my heart. Okay, I can't spray it out loud, but I'm praying for you in my heart. And um, so it was a whole different experience because all my prayers were, now for, the, for about three days, I'm praying in my heart, okay? And I asked God, God, is this like really effective, like, as much as normally, you know, you pray out loud, I'm praying in my heart, yes, I have the faith and all of that. Is it like really eff effective? You know, we can ask God questions, right? Yeah, we can ask God questions, okay? <laughs> and so, you know, God, Holy Spirit actually reminded me of, of two women in the Word of God who actually kind of used that kind of prayer in situations that they had to. Uh, I was reminded of the woman with the issue of blood. She was suffering for 12 years and like an outcast in the community. And she was in the middle of this crowded place where she was not welcome. So she had to kind of creep in. And she said in her heart, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. That was her prayer from within, full of faith. And what happened? She was healed. And this other woman I was reminded of was you know, Hannah. She went to the temple and she's going on and on and nobody can hear what she's saying. The priest thought that she was drunk and confronted her saying, woman, why are you drunk in this uh, time of the day? But she said no and, and she expressed how you know, she has been waiting uh, to bear a child and she was making her request, her cry to God. And this morning I just want to say that you know, some of you, you might have been releasing your cries to God in your heart prayer to God in your heart, which no one else has heard, no one else knows. But the Lord would say that He hears you. And each time you release a cry to Him, directed to Him, not a, not a complaint, okay? Not a complaint or a gumble, but I'm talking about a genuine cry, a cry for help, a genuine cry to the Lord, God, I, I, I need you right now. You know, you might be facing a situation at office, you know, with a, with a group of people or maybe it's at a meeting and you're hearing devastating things, you, it might not be the most suitable thing to verbalize your prayer or cry out to the Lord. In those moments, we can, we have 
the ability to communicate with the living God right there, right at that moment. Nobody knows, nobody hears, but you can communicate with him. So, you know, it's like these modern day, you know, detective crime scenes, okay? You get uh, the person who's looking or going to engage with the enemy, they have this device, okay? The hearing device that they put on where a person from the outside who has a bigger view of the whole area where the enemy has gotten a hold of kind of gives instructions okay, and alerts and warnings. So this person, the soldier or whoever, FBI agent or whoever, NCIS agent or whoever it is, goes with the weapons and they have the in-ear device, okay, whatever it is. And the person from the outside who has the technology to detect the enemy gives warnings hey go to your right go to your left incoming incoming alert incoming alert so then the soldier is ready okay now for me you know prayer is like that okay it's the device that we have okay a hearing device that we have with us all the time i mean you that's if you keep it on all the time okay so if you keep it on all the time you can hear the alerts from God directly, he has a view of the entire earth, okay? He has a view of every single detail that's going on. So he can alert, he can let us know what's going on. What weapon should you use right now? Which direction is the enemy coming from? What kind of enemy? Is it one? Is it a troop? Is it, you know, what kind? Are they coming suddenly? Are they moving fast? Are they moving slow? You get direction. So, you know, basically, prayer is communication with God and and that is two way okay it, it just like any other communication in any other relationship it has to be two way if not it's abnormal okay if I'm the only one at home talking with my husband and I don't let him speak it's a disaster okay it'll be bad it's not a proper marriage okay that will be the end of the marriage so just like any communication in any relationship, it has to be two-way. And that's what our communication, our prayer with the Lord should be two-way. Okay, so you can go to the next slide. And so prayer is our wireless communication with God 24-7. Okay, so 24 hours of the day, seven days of the week. If we keep that hearing device on, we get the direction, we get the warnings, we are alerted on time as to what we ought to do. Okay, but, you know, but if we stick to the conventional idea of prayer, okay, prayer is when I'm having my devotion time at home or my family prayer time at home uh, with God, you know, that's, that's prayer for me. And you leave your hearing device there and go to work, go to school, go for classes, you're missing out. So we've got to have that communication with the Lord so that even when you're tra while you're traveling, you're hearing his voice, you're hearing his warning, you're hearing what he's saying. You can ask him questions. Even in your heart, while going in the bus, you know, can ask God questions and he'll speak to you. Holy Spirit will speak to you. Okay, if you can verbalize your prayer, sure, why not? While you're walking, while you're showering, while you're cooking. You know, we, we can constantly have this communication with the Lord. And, it, and it's a two-way thing. Uh, you can go to the next slide. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, can we read it together? Pray without ceasing. This verse did not make sense to me at one point. I was like, I read it. I'm like, how is this even possible? Like, I have a life. You know, I have to go to school. I have, there's work to do. How can I pray 24-7 without ceasing? It didn't make sense to me until, you know, the upgrade came. Okay, until I realized, no, it's, it's, it's a constant communication that we have with God. We communicate with Him. It doesn't have to be lengthy, you know, kneeling on the ground. You can. Yes, of course, we kneel and pray when we have to. Yes, we verbalize it when we have to. But if the circumstance, the situation is as such where you cannot even verbalize, you can still pray, intercede, declare, decree, rebuke. We'll go into all of that uh, in a few minutes' time. 
but so so this is possible okay it is possible to pray without ceasing when you're constantly in communication with him all right yes okay so depending on the nature of the attack and and how the enemy is you know cooking up his disaster okay the lord will alert us okay what kind of weapon we ought to use okay just like we saw in the weapon room and we've been talking about various kinds of weapons spiritual weapons the lord will alert us what we ought to use at what time what is going to be the most effective okay so uh, even in prayer there are types there are various ways that we can intercede you can go to the next slide and one of the ways is we make declarations and decrees okay so a declaration is basically stating out loud or announcing a fact okay say your enemy that is confronting you is fear you make a declaration and say now our declarations and decrees they are based on the word of god okay on truth on true facts not just imaginations and whatever we feel like but it's on the truth and the ultimate truth is nothing but the word of god right so uh, you say your enemy is fear you declare make a declaration or it's saying no i have not been given a spirit of fear i have been given a spirit of power love and a sound mind that is what i am receiving right now okay so through your declaration it's like okay just imagine with me a little okay i i like to imagine uh, so it's like you throw this smoke bomb kind of thing that cripples and paralyzes uh, the enemy so fear is paralyzed when you release that declaration of truth okay you you cripple him he he is unable to come back up right and a decree is an authoritative command that cannot be reversed this term is mostly used um in a you know in a setting where a king rules the kingdom and the king issues his decree it's he sets his seal on it and it can't be reversed nobody nowhere can do anything to reverse the decree of the king right so the word of god okay there are decrees there are principles there are standards that the lord has said would happen we can decree issue those decrees because the word of the lord and when he speaks something it comes to pass okay even if it takes a while even though it looks like it's taking a while if the lord has spoken something it will come to pass so we issue decrees that right? when we were moving our house from navala to nugegoda um actually before we moved the house we were issuing declarations and mostly declarations on a daily basis because uh, we realized when we when and check the house uh, people who occupied it before before us uh, have you know worshiped other things and they had this specific room which was a prayer room and pujas and like 24/7 they had all kinds of worship going on there and they proudly i mean gladly told us what kind of things they had summoned and we were like oh my gosh this is going to be a <laughs> a war zone if we don't take authority over it so even before we moved in daily we would get together and issue declarations daily we would like uh, pray over that uh, over the over that place even though we were not there we were releasing it's like spiritual drones into that place to release attacks on the enemies who were there okay and and we put praise and worship also running 24/7 we still have the praise and worship running 24/7 um and so it changes shifts the atmosphere the things that were there before it can't stay and once we got to the house we issued the decree because the word of god says that the earth belongs to the lord and so we rededicated that land we walked around the land to all all to every corner of the house we we dedicated it and we say we decree that yes this land now belongs to the lord and so ever since then it belongs to the lord and it will continue so um yeah in job 22 verse 
28, it says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. So these are weapons that we can use. Declarations, decrees. So a must is that you need to know the word of God for this. You can't just say, you know, Lord, I declare that this thing, this amount of money is coming to my possession, or, you know, all kinds of whims and fancies that that's not what declarations and decrees are. It's the truth that you declare. Okay, it's, if it's a prophetic word that the Lord has spoken over you and you bear witness, yes, you can declare those things. You can uh, continue to speak it forth until it comes into manifestation. So knowing the word of God is definitely important for that. Okay, and another type, you can go to the next slide, of prayer that we can release is rebuking or to rebuke the lies and negativity of the enemy. So, you know, the enemy can bring all kinds of people our way, all kinds of thoughts into our mind that are, you know, full of lies, negative, you know, really tries to pull us emotionally down, mentally down. But rebuking, okay, is like, okay, now imagine with me again, okay, a bit. Um, it's like that umbrella I was talking to you about. You know, when there's an incoming, this umbrella also can be like a shield where the bullets can bounce off, okay? So your spiritual reflexes have to be really fast to open that umbrella and bounce the bullet back into the camp of the enemy. So when the enemy brings all kinds of negative thoughts, words that are spoken over you, you rebuke it in Jesus' name. So Jesus also had to kind of rebuke Peter. Right? Jesus was talking about how he had to go through suffering. It has to be done and he's going to be killed. And Peter takes Jesus to a corner and says, you know, the Bible says that Peter was rebuking Jesus. Okay, But Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You don't have in mind the things of God. So anything that anyone tries to say over you that opposes what God says about you, any thought that the enemy tries to plant in your mind that is rooted in fear, doubt, unbelief, you know, tries to pull you down, tries to take you back to your past uh, and, and tears you emotionally and mentally down, you got to rebuke. Our spiritual reflexes have to be strong have to be fast, okay? We've got to, we can't let anything that is not ours, that does not belong to us, come and land on us, come and sit on us, and come and, like, find its resting place uh, in our territory, okay? Like, for an example, in your house, okay, if you see a creature, a rodent, okay, let's not go into very scary creatures, but say, like, this huge rat or a baby water monitor or whatever, okay, roaming around in the garden trying to enter your house, okay, even though you're not a skilled hunter, you somehow try to, you know, scream, shout, throw things at it, do whatever possible to get it out, right? Yeah? yeah? Or will you, like, let that thing come in? <laughs> no. So even our minds, our lives, we can't let unwanted things, words, thoughts, things that are opposing the word of God come and rest and find its settlement in our lives. Okay, our spiritual reflexes have to be fast and strong. And again, you need to know what God says about you. You need to know who you are in him. You need to know what God says about him and what he can do so that you can rebuke fast. Okay, so remember the umbrella. Okay, and um, so don't let anything, you know, don't take lightly even the thoughts. I just want to say that specifically, don't take lightly those intruding thoughts, those fearful thoughts, those thoughts that bring self-doubt and, you know, makes you want to think of the worst possible scenario in the future and what will happen and going to worry. No, you got to rebuke it, right? So that's uh, another weapon that we use in prayer. And then when, also you need help, okay, say the baby water monitor or the giant water monitor try, gets into the house, okay, and you're trying everything you can to get it out, but you need help, then you call on help. 
because through prayer we also release prayers of agreement okay yes we come together in agreement matthew 18 verse 19 says Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amen. Okay, so I want to call up here Udita to uh, share a testimony of, yeah, of prayer of agreement and how it helped. Thank you. Um, Last uh, Good Friday, um, we, I took uh, the two daughters to the doctors because the eldest one had a cough and the small one also occasionally coughed, but she didn't have just for a checkup. And then uh, the doctor said she, the, the, for the second one, uh, she's having an abnormal sound in her heart, just a small sound, nothing to worry, just you go and have a... Look, so we said anyway, the pediatrician wanted a, like recommended a routine echo and we were about to take her, so we'll go. So we went to the echo and uh, then the doctor said uh, she has uh, VSD, that is a uh, ventricular uh, septal defect, that is the, the bottom most uh, two chambers, between the two chambers there's a wall in between the uh, chambers and there's a hole between the two chambers and the good blood and the bad, bad blood gets mixed up and so uh, that uh, normally these these kind of defects are corrected uh, before four months uh, now she's almost six months uh, so he advised to uh, go for surgery immediately and uh, the uh, the worst case scenario he gave was that normally with these things, uh, the, the lung pressure would uh, increase more than the, the body pressure. That is, uh, normally the lung pressure should be half of the body pressure. And uh, so when, even when the lung pressure becomes equal or more than the body pressure, the blood comes, goes the other way around. So when that happens, there's no reversal. So, uh, so he gave the worst case scenario. So and then we were thinking of uh, what to do. Um, so uh, all uh, family and especially uh, the Wokamas uh, church family got together. We started praying because um, this is the exact time frame. Uh, two years back, we lost our second daughter. So we had to go through uh, reliving the same thing again. Uh, because uh, the second daughter also did not have any symptom whatsoever. And uh, so we all came together, uh, especially uh, the extended family here, and started praying. And uh, we consulted the surgeon also. Um, we did not know, to be honest, we did not know who we were consulting because we had the name in our hand. We just went to him. Ultimately, to see that he's considered the best at the moment in Sri Lanka. So apparently we had the best surgeon, the best facilities to say a person, to, to, to compare with uh, certain facilities. Um, and uh, on the 12th of April, she uh, underwent the surgery. And um, after three hours, the surgeon came and said, uh, her lung pressure was uh, not that high as stated in the echo. And, uh, and it was so un uneventful surgery according to the procedure and everything went well and she stayed at the ICU for only uh, one and a half days. And um, the, the thing is, uh, myself and my wife was there in the ICU uh, talking to the ICU doctor. So there was another one month baby who went underwent the surgery. And there was another five year old boy who underwent a surgery. So for those two, those two, the doctor says the negative things. And then he turns to our side and says, nothing to worry, everything's fine. And she has recovered remarkably and so speedily. And so we were, we were guilty. 
like you know how now those those parents are looking at us and then um, then um, we were having a call and then uh, my wife was telling it's all uh, god's grace and all suddenly they look, looked at us like we was telling something strange so at that point only i texted uh, the group that there were two other children that needs prayer uh so after putting that to the request the next day they also got positive news so uh the one month your uh, one month old baby was also transferred to the room and uh, the five year old boy after two two couple of days uh went home so uh i mean uh, our daughter also came home uh, and the discharge summary states that uh, the lung pressure was uh almost half of the body pressure that was the ac- accepted level of the uh lung pressure so it's pre op also it was the it was almost half of the body pressure post op also most uh, half of the body pressure the 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 defect was also closed and uh, with the speedy recovery there's no there's no reason for the hospital to keep her at the hospital so they discharged so and that is all uh, i suppose uh, it's the i honestly believe it is the corporate prayer that changed and uh, the, he she was discharged on the 16th of april that's the exact date the second daughter left us the date doctor said that we can't have the baby uh, uh, taken home the third baby we were able to bring home yes god Praise God. You know, that's, that's what prayer can do. You know, there are some battles that we, we fight together. You know, not every battle is to be fought alone. And, you know, if you're struggling in, in a certain area and you've tried and tried, and you're, it's, it's a challenge, you know, get help. Get help. That's why, you know, in the army, you, you don't see... in many occasions you don't see uh, you know single soldiers going to uh, fight a war when it's war you go together as a troop okay and another thing yes you can go to the next slide is in prayer we persist until breakthrough okay i'm not going to read the whole uh, passage uh, we don't need to go to the whole passage but jesus uh says a parable about you know this w- this widow who comes to an unrighteous judge and keeps keeps bringing her request over and over and over and over again and uh, Jesus says this parable even though that judge is unrighteous because she keeps you know coming over and over again he'll let her have what she wants but how much more god yeah how much more uh yeah it says at the end nevertheless when the son, sorry uh, i tell you he will give justice to them speedily this is talking about god speedily nevertheless when the son of man comes will he find faith on earth so our persistent prayer at some points you know we got to keep persisting until we see the breakthrough so it's like if if it's an image you know we have uh if it's a place where the enemy is inhabiting your persistent prayer what it does is it it sends it sends angels from one angle from another angle another and another and another until the enemy is surrounded until the enemy is surrounded and he has no way of escaping no way of ex- expanding and the enemy supply lines are cut off because of your prayers because of your decrees because of your declarations and the enemy is surrounded and he, his supply line is cut off so he eventually gets weaker and weaker starves to death dies to death, whatever whatever until the enemy is completely wiped out until the angels of the lord take charge and war against the works of the enemy and you see bang your victory your breakthrough so some places you might have to wait for you know weeks days months years until your breakthrough comes as uh, some of you know we we have a few uh, requests especially people we are praying for 
Now we've been been praying and praying, but we know that the enemy's grip over their life is weakening little by little. And and God shows, God does show signs little by little that hey, the enemy's grip is weakening, weakening. Something's happening. You keep persisting. You keep declaring in faith. We've got to have faith. Faith is like that bulletproof vest that we wear in battle. It keeps us guarded. It keeps our heart guarded. It keeps our faith. It keeps our hope in God guarded. And and we are protected from those fires that the enemy sends. Okay. And um, yeah, I think since you know we have not much time, we'll quickly go uh, to the last slide. So I just want to encourage you, you know, stay armed in the spirit. If you've got to look for your weapon, okay, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? I can't remember. Where did I leave? Where did I leave my gun? Where did I, where did I leave my declarations? Where did I leave my rebuke? Like, where did I leave it? If you've got to look for your weapon or you can't remember and you're not armed with it 24-7, then you're going to be in trouble. Again, we've got to upgrade our weapons. If you missed any of the previous series uh, on on the on this topic, you can go ahead and listen. Listen. Upgrade yourself. Read. Read books. Read the Word of God. See word search. See what it says about you know for yourself about uh, how declarations affect uh, and how you can use declarations. What are the decrees? What are the promises of God that you can use in your prayer life? You know, upgrade yourself. And finally, fight the good fight okay we've got to be fighters we've got to know that yes it you know this none of us are exempt from battles we have each have our own battles we each have you know multiple battles that we face but know this that no enemy is greater than the one who backs you up okay no enemy no enemy is greater and we want to open open up the altars uh, do we have time pass with yeah Okay, we'll open up the altars for for those, you know, you you know, okay. Yes, I, I know I got a battle, I know I got a war. But if you are feeling like, you know, I've been battered so much and I've been hit so much, it's kind of hard to pick myself up for battle. It's it's hard to pick myself, pick my faith up once again to fight. If you're in that place, I want to ask you to come forward and our prayer ministers will pray with you. And also, if if you are saying, God, I, I want to upgrade. I want to really, after hearing these things, I want to have a, have your anointing and a spirit of an overcomer to fight, fight these specific battles. This specific thing is in your mind and you are wanting God to give you the strategy. You want God to give you the anointing to really fight through as an overcomer over this specific, over a specific situation in your life. I want to ask you to come forward so that we can agree with you. And if you need a prayer of agreement uh, for whatever you're facing right now, I want to ask you to come forward and uh, we will pray with you. So can we all rise up? And even as uh, make these declarations, I want to ask those whoever needs prayer, you can come forward. Yes. Yes, God, we, we right now we say, Lord, here we are. Here we are. You're the God who trains our hands for war. And you're the God who trains our fingers for battle. And this morning, God, we pray. Right now, over every single person here, God, that we will, we will take the training. Yes, the training that the Spirit of God gives, even with the teaching, even with uh, the revelation from your word. God, we pray that right now, every single person here will receive that training in the Spirit. Yes, God, that we will be activated. Every spiritual sense that has got deaf, that has got dumb, that has got paralyzed, uh, God, by the different blows of the enemy, we say it's coming alive once again in Jesus' mighty name. God, that we are being activated in our spiritual senses to be able to hear, to be able to see, to be able to respond, to be able to, Lord, be proactive. 
active. Yes, God, we declare and decree that we are receiving the spirit of an overcomer in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, God, that same spirit, that same tenacity that you released, that anointing that you released over even the founders of this house, God, to fight the good fight. We say, your Lord, we are drawing from that strength. We are drawing from that anointing to be true overcomers in Jesus mighty name and we thank you God that it's not just the battle is not just in our hands but God the battle is yours and you're going to lead us until we get the victory yes you're going to lead us through these situations God in our mind in our will in our emotions in our families in our workplaces yes God over the call of God in our lives we say we will see victory we will see breakthrough and we will receive that strength the perseverance, God, to keep standing, to keep fighting in the midst of the battle. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Grow, go, glow. Overcomers Church. Changing lives, transforming nations.